Good morning and welcome to Errol's Ion. I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and joining me for the 10th episode of Errol's Ion is Errol Voss. Errol, I think it's good evening for you, isn't it? Yes, it's good evening. How are you doing, Alan? Terrific. And, I, you know, 10 episodes, I can't, it's hard to believe. I mean, we started this, you know, you were this, you were just this, uh, you were, you're basically, <laughs> we, were, we, were, we weren't even doing video in the first ones, were we? No, no, we, we weren't. migrated. I think we did a video of the first one yeah, and the rest we did some audio. But yeah, here we are. Here we are on video. Well, and just for the, the benefit of the two listeners, Errol's got a studio set up. He's got like monitors. I mean, this is incredible. You went from a guy sitting in headphones to, you know, your little cheap headphones to a studio. So I have to I have to thank the Errol's Eye on uh, production studios, Errol, Errol's, Errol Voss Marketing. For this there we go yeah there we go i put it up on the screen okay so Errol, what is uh Errol, what is the uh what's our eye on today what's the topic yeah so the topic of today is how building a brand can protect your business all right so i mean like, the obvious question is why is this important because i know we've talked in the past about reputation so now you, you work with a lot of businesses and so why is this important well, it's important for so many businesses in so many different industries. And the main importance of why to build a brand is it protects you against competitors. And it all, well, the main reasons why building a brand can protect you is that it protects you against competitors. It protects you against market fluctuations and it protects you from platform changes. So we can dive into, into all three and maybe I'll give an example to explain. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's, yeah, it's one thing to talk about. We know you, we talked in the past episode about brands out there, but now this is, I think this is important, particularly like platform changes because they've changed over the years. I mean, you're a young, you're young, Errol. <laughs> I, I, you know, things that this stuff didn't exist when I grew up. It was, you know, the, the internet didn't really grow, grow up. I grew up in the internet. You grew up with the internet. I grew up with the non-internet. So it's, it's interesting. So mm. in, in a very short period of time, in a generation, you kids your age or kid, kids <laughs> how old you're like 30 right <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm turning 31 pretty soon next week so <laughs> yeah, but it's incredible i don't you how many platforms have you seen changed in your in your sort of adult life right the last 15 years or yeah whatever yeah like. there's been a lot of platform a lot of platform changes and a lot of platforms come and go right sorry i had to just sat there yeah so a lot of platforms come and go there's been a lot of platform changes right so I'll give you an example, Alan, of why building a brand can really protect your company. So, yeah, okay. A really good example that I like to use is e-commerce. Think about people in on the in the e-commerce space, right? So, example, let's say you're selling plush animals on LinkedIn, right? Or sorry, on LinkedIn, you're selling plush animals on Amazon, right? Yeah. Now, Amazon, their goal is to get items for as cheap as possible to their customers, right? They want to have the best prices always. So for Amazon, selling, it's a race to the bottom in terms of pricing, right? You have to have really low pricing. To that's pay. right. That's right. Yeah. At the same time, advertising costs on Amazon and pretty much any other platform has been rising steadily, right? So you are, you have to lower your prices and you're paying more and more for advertising. And so that's a recipe for reduced profits, right? Yeah. So profit margins for these e-commerce sellers are shrinking and shrinking. Now I use plush animals as an example. So do you know a brand of plush animals called TY Beanie Babies? Well, I've, I mean, I've, I do remember Actually, I remember the symbol, even their T, I think it's a red and white yeah. symbol. Yeah, it's like a little red heart yep. paper that's attached to the plush animal. So all they did is they put this little piece of paper, little red heart, and wrote TY on it and became yep. iconic. They built their brand that way. So while every other plush animal seller is, is uh, doing this race to the bottom for pricing and advertising more and more to get people to see their items when people search plush animals, TY hasn't had to do this because they've built the brand. People are willing to pay more for a TY right. stuffed animal yeah. just because of the brand. So while everyone is are spinning their wheels and it's a race to the bottom with pricing, 
TY controls its own pricing because it has brand equity. People are willing to pay for that brand. So whether advertising gets more expensive or prices keep getting lower and lower, TY Beanie Babies has control over their business. And that's because they built the brand. So that's a, my first example. Well, that's interesting. Of why no, but building I, a brand protects them. On the old offline, uh, there was a company. So it was a manufacturer. They made, um, it's called Lexington Furniture. And they literally had the minimum selling price, the maximum, whatever you, you know, the ML, MSR, or MSRP or something, the minimum sell, uh, manufacturer suggested retail price. So that was kind of, yeah. the, and they, they would not, and I think Mercedes Benz does this as well. They said that the, the dealerships, could not sell below that price. So Lexington mm -hmm. Furniture had the same, it was a MLR RSP, like the minimum level, uh, selling price. You couldn't go below yeah. that. And that yeah. was their to protect their, their, their brand. And I think the Mercedes, uh, BMWs, they all have that as well. So it doesn't, the brand doesn't get diluted. And I think the high-end luxuries do that as well. I don't know how they battle mm -hmm. this. I mean, obviously, then you have fake knockoffs and so forth. But I, I like what you're saying because that was something that was in place pre-online. Uh, when online came, you know, it's harder to control, right? For plush toys mm -hmm. or for plush yeah. for TI two I brands. But I, I like what you're saying here. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the first way of how someone who's selling products online. That's why yeah. building a brand would protect them. Um, not only from competitors, but also from the platform itself, Amazon and the increased advertising costs, right? Now, the next example I'll give you is why, let's say uh, anyone, let's say you're any, any company, you're doing online marketing, okay? Now, let's say you're using LinkedIn heavily for your online marketing, your online outreach. You've built up a really solid community on LinkedIn, right? Now, what happens what happens if for whatever reason your linkedin ever your linkedin page ever got shut down right you lose your linkedin page maybe you anger the algorithm you do something you lose your page you maybe you get hacked right if you lost yeah. that page you'd have to kind of start over on another platform or start over on a new you'd have to create a new page right so if you if you have a brand if you have a brand people are willing to follow you from platform to platform. And so um, an another example I could give you is you're running a successful YouTube channel, but you want to move over to TikTok, right? You want to yeah. move over to TikTok. If you've built a brand on YouTube, people are willing to follow you onto TikTok. So you don't have to start, essentially start over on a new platform. You have this brand, people are coming and you're, you're, you have a leg up on your competition because you're bringing all, the, all your community from these other platforms. To a new platform, that's right. and that's what really strengthens your company, right? But I think that, but see, there's still that point where you're the inflection point. We still have zero followers. If you do start up new and fresh, I, I do remember it was a time, uh, probably about five six years ago, 2017 ish, when I was using LinkedIn, and and then suddenly something happened, and I was overseas like you, um, and being overseas, being you're in China, I was back then in Qatar. And something happened and I thought I went to, so I went look for an alternative. There's not a lot, Angel List, Angel List is okay, but it's still not LinkedIn. Angel List is kind of for mm -hmm. startups and there's a lot of similarities, but Angel List is now, it's really geared for investors and startups to, to push jobs and kind of, but it wasn't LinkedIn, you know? Yeah. Um, so what, what, what do you say to people? It's fine to say it in theory, but in, in practice, you're still starting from zero on the new platform. You, you are starting from zero on a new platform, but if you have a, a strong following who they actively want to listen to you, uh, or they're actively looking to interact with your brand, as yeah. soon as you start up on a new platform, those people follow you over. And the most extreme example of this would be like, like, like a, a celebrity, like a Kim Kardashian, whatever platform sure. she opens up on, she's going to get followers fast, right? She's a huge brand identity. Another brand, how about the North Face, right? the clothing line, the North Face, if whatever, whatever platform they open up on, people like the North Face, they identify with it, they're gonna, they're gonna flock to that platform and follow and become part of that community, right? So it's interesting. the strength it's in this, yeah. the strength in this and what protects the brand, protects the company essentially is by having a brand, companies don't need to rely too heavily on any single platform. They can exist on multi-channel, multi-platforms, 
and yeah. they have better control over things like advertising spend, the types of content they put out, the type of people they want to uh, get in touch with. So that's how it protects the company by having this brand. Well, and, and to your point, then in terms of that, the, the the brand, you know, transcending across. You mentioned Amazon, and this is what I heard a few years ago: was Alexa is going to move into. So if people are looking, we we'll use your example here, Alexa, send me a plush toy. Uh, find me a plush plush toy, right? What's Amazon mm -hmm. going to do? It's going to go to its. If they own, if if Amazon owns a supply chain or a company that makes plush toys. Alexa will, will send you a list of three or four, whatever, right? If you ask for three or four, or if if T.Y. Hilton, T.Y. TY uh, uh, Toys is the top or is already part of Amazon, they might recommend it or may, she may or may not. Alexa may or may not. But if you say, Alexa, mm -hmm. order me a T.Y. TY toy, uh, T.Y. Labs or whatever, T.Y. Plush toy, that will, you have to, so the brand is there. That's a, that's a yeah. voice. Yes, that, that's a really good example, Alan, and I'll touch on this. So like you said, Alexa owned by Amazon, right? Now, Amazon, so if you're an Amazon seller, let's go back to selling plush toys. You not only have to worry about your competition, but yeah. Amazon is starting to start its own uh, lines of so many different types of products. So that's Amazon right. might have its own line of plush toys. They go direct to the factory. They have their Amazon Basics brand, yeah. right? Yeah. So when shoppers and shoppers are moving towards voice search uh, huge it's it's exponentially increasing right now if someone is using an alexa amazon to search for plush toys of course amazon is going to recommend their own products yeah. right they're going to recommend yeah. an amazon basics product and a good part of the time amazon will have the best pricing right because they have that buying power so but that, so that's the thing brand, if you have a brand you wouldn't be searching for Give me a plush toy you say i want a ty beanie baby boom right. now you've just you protected yourself yeah so that that's really you know brands the brand aware that really helps protect you because then if it's google okay google get me a plush toy or i don't know who the other ones are i don't know who the other voice ones are so there's google there's amazon who else has a voice <laughs> who else has it well, well, it would be uh, like these voice platforms connect to- Oh, Siri. Uh, hey, Siri. It's service. Apple. Yeah, right? so Siri connects yeah. to Google, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Hey, Siri. Oh, so it's, hey, Siri. Okay, Google. And I don't even know if there's anyone else out of Amazon. But the Roku, does Roku have their own voice now? I don't know. I, does Roku have one? And so some of these other ones. But that's it, right? The brand recognition. Mm -hmm. Who's the other yeah. one? So, sorry? Is there any other one? There's no other one. Okay, there's no. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's one way, uh, another way that uh, building your brand protects your company, right? It protects you. It protects you from your, oh, I mean, once again, it protects you from your competition, right? And uh, Amazon is a rare case where the platform has become a, the competition for many of the sellers on there. So it's a very strange situation. And uh, diving onto, uh, I guess it's, they're all related, but the third way that um, having a strong brand can protect your company and this goes back to selling products is for instance on amazon right you're selling the cost of ads are going up it's getting more expensive now walmart has opened up its own online marketplace and it's really pushing for market share right and yeah walmart's a big player walmart has some power so is that, um, i haven't heard of that is that uh, is that a new company i haven't really heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, really online, they, they're yeah, yeah. really pushing for that right so if you have a brand you're going to start up a lot faster on walmart because people will be looking for your brand and you're not going to have to pay all the advertising fees that people who don't have a brand will have to pay right so by having a brand it really protects you against the inflation inflationary costs of advertising so I this and let's deep dive into this one because advertising you know the the, the the space to advertise you know, mm -hmm. the traditional trad, trad, you know, there's in crypto, they use uh, DeFi and TradFi. So here we got trad, trad media and uh, whatever it is, a D media online. Like, so you got online media sources, like all the multiple avenues, but you have the traditional now who are fighting for that ad space. So where, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's a balance if it's cheap and eyeballs are there. I don't know, in, in China, it may be different. But, you know, they talk about it here, like if it's really cheap to put a billboard, go and go that, to that space. But I think 
they're still fighting for the margins because the traditional advertising spaces, billboards, bus stops, newspaper, TV, radio, they're high, they're very expensive in terms of just because they have the infrastructure, they have people. And so well, how do you balance that, to Errol? Because where do you put your, your advertising dollars if you do have a brand yeah. or you want to build your brand? Yeah, so that, that's a that's a good point. Now, advertising, right? It's all about it's, it's about the cost, right? You don't want to be paying too much, right? So a great example of this is TikTok. TikTok advertising is substantially uh, less costly than like Facebook or YouTube or Google. TikTok advertising is really good right now. You can advertise. There's tons of eyes on there. There's tons of there's a big audience, and it's not very expensive. But yeah. what happens is marketers start to notice then more people start advertising on that platform more and more and more then it becomes saturated right so yeah. this is this is what drives uh new platforms from developing this is what drives uh new types of advertising it's once a one place is saturated so let's say once TikTok becomes saturated where do we go from here right so things also move kind of cyclically in in marketing so we before we had traditional billboards and maybe like a poster at the bus stop right and we kind of we moved away from that we're very digital now but now it's kind of moving back to these real life ads except like a digital billboard yeah and, that's and right a, a, like digital bus stops that that change based on who's around them right like so it can it'll change based on the demographic of who, who's looking at that billboard right so that's what really drives the change in platform advertising and the whole industry is where can we still get the go the good audience without the uh spiked costs yeah it's a, i guess it's a dilemma i mean i see this i see people say oh, we should promote it so promote it as mm. soon as i post on linkedin uh, as soon as i post on mostly Am Am uh, amsterdam, amsterdam mostly on instagram like you it's you know, do you want to promote this to or facebook do you want to promote this and that promotion is just to a random group of Whoever, like that promotion is, is almost wasted dollars. I, I've heard this mm -hmm. term, I don't know if you've heard it. Don't uh, spend your dollars, uh, spend your pennies like a dollar and don't spend your dollar like a penny. Meaning basically you get zero leverage. If you spend a penny and it, it, it gives you that leverage for like a dollar or you spend mm -hmm. a dollar and it's basically thrown in the bin. You know, they, they throw that into the trash. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. and Gary, Gary Vee talks about that. He says, you know, literally, if you throw on a bus stop and there's only 50 people go across there versus the same dollar you could post and get 50,000 people eyeballs, you know, it's, it's like advertising that uh, today people are still, uh, these big 60,000 people are going to be there in your booth. You'll get 60,000. No, you won't. <laughs> and all the people, yeah. you know, this, your booth, the money you spend for that little booth, that's gone. You don't get the same eyeballs because people walk around and they may or may not see it. They may or may not catch your little, your little booth that you just yeah. Spent. Yeah, and that, that's what happens online. Your dollar goes less and less online. So I remember even back in 2018, bidding on Amazon keywords. So some keywords that for every click I used to pay 18 cents. Yeah. Fast forward to 2022, the same keywords they cost a dollar 24 now. To get Crazy. Clicked. So so they yeah. So it's it's been huge. It's been huge increases, like 12x in the last year or two, right? So. Uh, for the price of maybe one click back in the day, I used to get like seven or eight clicks for that. Right. So once you, your dollar isn't going as far on one advertising platform, it's like, well, where can I take my dollar and get, make it go farther. Right. And right now it's pretty much TikTok. That's the, that's the buzz right now. That's where you can get the good, cheap advertising and get a lot of eyeballs. So speaking of that, I mean, YouTube shorts, I know that Gary Vaynerchuk's talking about YouTube shorts and Facebook mm -hmm. fan pages, but those are just existing, like the, the Google, Google AdWords or YouTube, YouTube searches. I don't know. I think that's, you know, using the hashtag shorts isn't going to get, I literally, there's millions, hundreds of millions already, you know, as soon as somebody, as soon as, as you said, the advertisers find that, or they, find, they see that there's so many eyeballs, they just have to cost, they have to cost. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it moves fast. It moves fast. Like, TikTok, it might be, it was better last year. It, well, it's always better than the, the previous year, but it, I mean, it could be economical to advertise today and just be outrageously expensive in a year from now, easily, right? So things move very fast. And that's why 
building a brand is essential to protecting your company because once you're, let's say if you're just a, a product on a single platform, what happens when it becomes so expensive to advertise on that platform, you can't even make a profit. Obviously you're going to have to sell somewhere else. And if you don't have a brand, you're just yeah. going to have to pretty much start over. You're going to have to start over. Whereas if you have a brand, you, you get on there right away, you're going to get traffic. The algorithms are going to like you. You're going to start selling. It, it just makes a night and day difference. So I want to finish this off because you've mentioned plush toys. And when you talk about building, yeah. build a bear was a big thing. <laughs> in, in the pre so build a bear. I still bring that up because it's literally can, from That's scratch. That's a great example. You know, you build a bear from scratch and he's got no, he or she has no brand, no identity. It's just that you build a bear. So building a brand, I mean, we could go, you walk into a store. And what do you have? You have you have the, the main ingredients. You got the stuffing. You've got the the, the framework. You can put some clothes on this bear. <laughs> get the hat with it. So you're building it from scratch, and you didn't. You know, your idea doesn't. It, it starts from you walk into that build a bear shop. And I know exactly. You know, this is, yeah. So who else is offering that service? Shopify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No one. No. So that's what that, that's their whole brand. They offer that whole experience, right? So yeah. prices of bears can go up, down, whatever, but people are going to pay for not only the bear, but also the whole experience of build a bear, right? So they have their brand. They have a cool identity, a valuable offering. They control their own pricing. The market still dictates, but they have some say over, over what they want to do because they built that brand. Errol, I, I really... I think next the next episode has to be how to build a brand and taking Aerovoss marketing, like from a marketing perspective, how to build a brand, because we've talked about how building a brand can help. But I think that's one of our next topics is going to how to, how to build a brand from the Aerovoss uh, perspective, because I think it's important. Yeah, for sure. Right. We've identified why it's important. We've given you a big reason to, to protect your brand. But the thing is, it's, it's yes, it is important, but how to do it. So that'll be the next topic that we cover, how you can build a brand. Um, and we'll give examples of how, whether you're just a small fish or you're a big multinational company, how do you build a brand that's going to suit your business and keep your business safe? That's something. And maybe we build it on the, the bear. We use the bear as an example of how to build it. Because it's literally, you mentioned that experience. You, every time there's someone uses your, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're totally right, Alan. There's wisdom in their whole business model of, uh, I mean, how to build a brand. You can look at the, well, we'll get into this next one, but build a yeah. bear. They built a brand through experience, through develop, yeah. through offering a very unique customer experience. Errol, this has been fun. Um, your, your screens behind you didn't do you justice. You barely can read it. The, the one, but big one behind you doesn't even have your name. So I, I've got to say <laughs> the Aerovoss marketing brand has failed in this, uh, this episode. <laughs> oh no, I have to go back to the drawing board. All right, Errol, have a great uh, week and we'll, we'll talk again next week. All righty, Alan. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. See you next week. Yeah, bye-bye.